Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and this is part one of the BuildCraft Machines tutorial. I'm going to show you some of the machines that are available in BuildCraft today. Um, just a couple of the basic ones, and we'll move on to some more advanced machines as well later on. So let's get started, shall we? The first machine I want to show you is probably one of the easier machines to see, but it's definitely complicated and has a lot of neat functions to it. Um, to make it, you're going to need four wooden gears and a crafting table and this is the automatic crafting table. Now this guy actually has a couple cool functions. Um, first off, and this is really not its intention, but it works great for this purpose. Um, if you go ahead and place down your automatic crafting table and start making a recipe. Let's say I want to make a uh, um, piston here and I realize, oh darn, I forgot a piece of iron. You can close the crafting table, go get your iron. Let's say I had a chest over here with iron in it. Let's just pretend, shall we? and then come back to the crafting table. You can go ahead and place your iron in there and get your piston out. So that's just kind of a side effect of the way the automatic crafting table works, but that's not the full intention. The full intention of the automatic crafting table is to go ahead and place your items in there. For example, let's make our piston again. Whoops. So we've got our piston, but we're going to leave that in the crafting table. This is now an automated crafting table, and once it receives, through pipes, or through a chest next to the crafting table, all the items necessary to make a piston, it will automatically make one. So let's demonstrate that now. So I've set up a pretty simple system here. This is an input chest, and the redstone engine working on this guy is going to pump items out of the chest. You know that because the darker line here on the wooden pipe indicates that the items will be coming out of the chest. This darker line is on the crafting table and this is going to pump out any pistons that get created by the crafting table into the chest next to the crafting table through the wooden pipe. So let's go ahead and check this out. So all we need to do is place items in the chest that belong in that recipe. So you can see if I place a piece of cobblestone in there, it'll land in the crafting table and it'll place that piece of cobblestone somewhere available. If we place three more pieces of cobblestone into the chest, they'll also be pumped into the crafting table and placed where they belong. Any subsequent cobblestone, let's say four more, will simply be added to the stacks already in the table. Let's go ahead and put a couple pieces of iron in there and a couple pieces of redstone. And they'll get added to the crafting table just the same. Now let's go ahead and put some planks. I'm going to go ahead and put six planks in there and they'll evenly be distributed along the top and once it has a complete set of items you'll see everything gets decremented by one and a piston is emitted out the wooden pipe and then deposited in the chest so that's how the automatic crafting table works it will automatically craft things you should also note that you don't have to pump things directly into the crafting table Instead, if you have a chest next to the crafting table that has the items that are necessary, so let's see, it's back to the default recipe, I'm just going to put a stack of cobblestone in. You can see that nothing happened. I'm now going to go ahead and put a bunch of wood in there. Still nothing. Some redstone. Let's see what happens now, since the only thing I have left to place in there is iron, I place one piece of iron in this chest. It took one of everything out and automatically created a piston for me. And if I put five iron ingots in there, it's going to slowly drain them out and create pistons. So you don't have to pump items into the chest. In fact, it's probably ideal to pump items into a chest next to the automatic crafting table. This way you can store a surplus of any items that you put in there to be used later on. The next machine to show you guys is the automatic miner. This guy is going to automatically mine straight down. Um, it'll mine one straight shaft to the bottom and automatically emit any items that it gets out of itself. In order to make this, you need an iron gear, and you're also going to need an iron pickaxe, which I hope you guys know the recipe for. Place this guy in the bottom, put the iron gear on top, and some redstone, and iron all along the sides. And you've got the mining well. Let's go check out how he works 
it's really quite simple, and you can see I've set up a pretty simple combustion engine system over here. It's not being cooled, but it's only for demo purposes. It's got some fuel in there. And if I flip the lever, it turns them on. So let's go ahead and plug in our mining well and turn it on and see what happens. Whoa, what's going on there? <laughs> oh, that's cool. It's creating a giant mess. That's right. It's automatically mining straight down and pulling out all the items out of the ground. And you can see it got a good amount there. Um, if you want to prevent this guy from making a big old mess like that, simply place a chest on the ground next to the miner. Now when we turn this guy on, he's going to go ahead and put all of his output into the chest. But I think we actually hit bedrock with that already, so let's move this guy. And you can see that the pipe goes all the way down to bedrock. So let's try one right here and flip it on. You can see now it's mining all the way straight down and pulling any items out of the ground that it finds. Pretty nifty. And it hit bedrock again. Very quick when you're using combustion engines. But also, eh, kind of dull. So let's go ahead and break these systems and just cover up the ground here. Next up I'm going to show you how to make and use a quarry. This is probably definitely one of the most useful items that Buildcraft gives us and you're going to fall in love with it the first time you use it. Um, however, it's a pretty expensive item requiring a good amount of items. Um, first off you're going to need three iron gears. You're then going to need to get yourself a couple of gold gears, two to be exact, and then you're going to need two diamond gears, which as you can see will require eight diamonds in total. You're also going to have to make yourself a diamond pickaxe. And In order to build this guy, the recipe is as follows. This is a quarry. The quarry is definitely one of the coolest items that are here. It's an advanced and a more um, useful version of the mining well. First off, you can simply place the quarry on the ground and it'll create a bunch of electrical tape. This is the size of the quarry in its default instance. If you let the quarry run as is right now, it'll mine out every single block from here to the bottom of the world of bedrock and dump all the items into a chest for you. However, you might want to specify the size of the quarry. You can do this by getting some redstone torches. I'm going to do it with three. And then you're going to need some lapis lazuli, which I'll have to find here. There it is. You're going to need three of those guys and place them on top of your redstone torches and we get landmarks. You're going to want to remember that recipe because it's used several times. To use a landmark, simply place it on the ground. You can also place a redstone torch next to the landmark and it'll shoot lines out in all six directions just to make it easy to see where things are going to be going. You're going to want to place another landmark somewhere along this line. Let's do a small quarry and place it right here. And if we do the redstone torch thing again, we can see this guy shooting off in all directions. Like I said, we're going to do a small quarry, so why don't we just put another one here. We can now break our redstone torches because we know everything's lined up properly. And you're going to want to right click on the one landmark that connects to all the others that you have. So in this case it's this guy. You can see now we've got a red outline. Place your quarry in front of that same landmark that you just right clicked and your electrical tape will be that size. The maximum size of a quarry is 64 by 64, which is actually very, very big. Uh, so you can have a lot of fun with the quarry. Uh, in order to use the quarry, of course, you need to supply power. Quarries are going to be able to use up to 9 energy units per tick. And if you recall from my engines tutorial, each one of these guys can produce 5 energy units per tick. So you really only need 2 combustion engines to run a quarry at full speed, if those combustion engines are running off of fuel. 
let's go ahead and flip the switch and see what happens. Quickly, you'll see the electrical tape start to get replaced by this orange quarry material. And then you'll see a quarry arm arrive and start to dig down. It's going to dig into the ground and start picking up items. And just like the mining well, they'll be shot into the air. So you're going to want to go ahead and get a chest and place it nearby. You should also, if you don't want to place a chest right nearby, get yourself some piping, because of course this is all about pipes. You can run your pipes like so and connect your chest. And as you can see, all the items are now automatically going through the chest, through the pipes into the chest. You do not need a wooden pipe and you do not need a redstone engine to pump items out because the quarry is automatically producing items for you. And you can see this guy's quickly digging down and making his way to bedrock. And he's going to dump everything he gets into this chest for you. Keep in mind that there is a small amount of energy loss as it's traveling through the gold pipe. So that's why I tend to like to use three combustion engines to power my quarries. And that wraps up how to use the quarry. The next item to show you is the pump. Remember I showed in a previous episode how to make tanks? And you just saw earlier in this episode how to make the mining well. Take a mining well and place a tank on top of it and you've got the pump. Pretty simple recipe if I do say so myself. So let's place some tanks on the ground here. All you need to do is take your pump and place it above some form of liquid, be it water or lava or oil. You'll find oil out in the world as you're playing Buildcraft. But for now, let's go ahead and check it out with water. As soon as you place your pump above the water, it'll immediately detect that it's sitting above water and open up a compartment underneath and run a pump down to the water. You can place this way up high above that water or lava source and it'll send this pipe all the way down to the ground and start sucking it up. However, of course, just like with most items in Buildcraft, in order to suck energy out of here, you're going to need to power it with some kind of engine. You can do it with four or five redstone engines if you want, or you can do it with a combustion engine or a steam engine. Just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and use a combustion engine. So let's get ourselves some fuel, just for demonstration purposes, and put a redstone signal next to it. So now the pump is active, and it will start pumping water out of this lake. However, there's nowhere for the water to go, so we're going to need some of those waterproof pipes that you saw in the pipe tutorial. Run your pipes, and you'll see that you don't need to use wooden pipes like you would if you were emitting from a tank because the pump is actually pulling water up for you. And because of Minecraft physics and the way water works in Minecraft, this infinite water source will automatically resupply itself. We can go ahead and run this pipe down to our tank, and you'll see it starts to fill up the tank and all the water running through the pipe will go into the tank. Our pool here is going to start getting drained pretty quickly. Once the tank is full, this water pipe will fill up all the way and have a backlog, so the pump will turn itself off, but the combustion engine will still run until it runs out of energy fuel. So now the pump is no longer running because it doesn't have anywhere to send the water. And if we were to place, like I said, another tank on top, it just gives more room for the water to sit in. So that's how you use the pump. Again, it works with lava, oil, and water. The final machine that I'm going to show in today's tutorial is the refinery. The refinery is how you combine um, energy produced from some of your engines with oil that you place in the refinery to get fuel. So the recipe, as you saw, requires a diamond gear. And I'm going to go ahead and hook it up over here by my combustion engines. You can see that they were running for a bit and have a bit of heat residually stored in them. Simply place your refinery down next to either a combustion engine or a pipeline that connects to a combustion engine. Refineries need about five energy units per tick to run at full capacity and full power. So let's go ahead and just turn off these engines. This guy should now only activate one engine, which is great. In order to refine oil into fuel, you can either
get a bucket and right click on the refinery with the bucket. So let's find some oil and right click. You can see that there's two tanks here that hold oil. Now if we activate our energy source, you can see that the refinery starts to kick into action. And these bars on the side tell you how much energy the uh, refinery has. This guy will slowly build up to a state of green, which is the maximum energy. But let's go ahead and speed up the process by turning on another engine. Keep in mind there is energy loss across that wire, so one engine probably won't do it when we're running it through a pipe system. We've now reached the point where the bars are green, and they're moving a lot quicker than they were just a moment ago. This tells us that the refinery is running at optimum efficiency and as fast as it can. And it's starting to drain the oil out of the black pipe here and fill up the fuel in the middle of the pipe. So let's give this guy a few moments and get our empty bucket ready. And you can see that as soon as it runs out of oil and fills up with fuel, it'll stop running. So let's turn off our engines. Take our empty bucket and right click, and we can't get the fuel out. Oh no, what are we going to do? Well, of course, this is build craft, and we need to pump the fuel out of this machine. So let's get ourselves a golden, I'm sorry, a wooden waterproof, some golden waterproofs. We'll probably want some tanks to store this in. And we'll need a redstone engine to help pump the items through. So we'll put our redstone engine down, like so. Our wooden pipe, like so. And don't forget your wrench, just in case you need to reorient your engine. Run your golden pipes over to a tank. Now, when we activate our engine, it will pump the fuel out of the engine. And the fuel will get stored in the tank. And since this is build craft after all, you should really be doing everything you can with pipes, you're going to want to set up a piping system so that you can pipe your oil from a storage tank or a pump directly into your refinery. So let's go ahead and activate this guy with a lever. And you'll see that the oil gets pumped out of this tank and sent into the refinery. The refinery's reservoir fills up with oil. And keep in mind there are two slots for oil here. And then turn on your engines and get your refinery pumping. Since this redstone engine is still on, it will immediately drain any fuel that gets created directly into your tank. It's a slow but sure process. You can even come down and watch the fuel dripping down and heading up into the tank. So that's how you use the refinery. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up part one of the Buildcraft machines. Part two will cover a couple more machines. Specifically, I'm going to go into how to use the filler, the builder, and the template table. Those are some pretty fun machines, but they're also pretty complicated, so they're going to be saved for another episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed this and learned a few things about Buildcraft today. Take it easy, everyone.